If you smoke menthol cigarettes, the government may be forcing a brand switch on you. Federal health officials are considering banning them in 2024, a century after they were first rolled in the Ohio Valley. 7 News reporter Colin Roos shows us how menthols were introduced to the world by a Jefferson County cashier and his persistent cough. On these streets 100 years ago, one man took an ancient invention and made it new again. To some, it was an unacceptable health risk. To others, a refreshing escape from life's pressures. The menthol cigarette still carries controversy, as well as a fascinating story on how it got into every convenience store in America. For decades, menthols have offered smokers a lighter, minty taste, or as early advertisements put it, mouth happiness. The CDC says they pose just as much of a health risk as untreated tobacco but they began life because one Ohio man thought they kept him healthier. In 1924, Lloyd Hughes of Mingo Junction worked in his father's restaurant and consistently came down with colds. His mother bought him menthol crystals found today in cough drops, and some of those crystals found their way into his bag of tobacco. He had a cough because he probably smoked for a long time, and uh, he started giving them to the customers in his dad's restaurant who were mill workers, coal miners, and railroad workers. With his cigarettes growing popularity, Hughes marketed and patented them under his own nickname, Spud. Through his wife's connections, he met the Block Brothers of Wheeling, who put menthol in their mail pouch brand. But it was the Axton Fisher Tobacco Company who brought his idea to the national market and brought him a pile of cash. It bought Spud's patent for $90,000, an amount that would have made him a millionaire in today's money. Milko says he was a flying enthusiast and blew through the money after crashing five different planes. Yet his legacy can still be seen from all the green on cigarette shelves today. One of the comments they got back for, uh, most was that they were cool. And, you know, that became a brand, the cool brand. But that legacy may now be in trouble. The Biden administration is currently reviewing a rule that would ban the flavor from behind the counter. Independent grocers like Neely's say it would be a drag on sales to smokers who haven't switched over to electronic options. Our older customers are, are true to their tobacco, but our younger customers are definitely moving more toward the vapes and the e-cigarettes. Nowadays, it's impossible to light up a spud. They went off the market in 1963, but his ideas still live on from the 1920s into the 2020s, another small town stitch in the fabric of American life. Reporting in Mingo Junction, Ohio, I'm Colin Roos, working for you. Thanks, Colin. Menthols aren't the only major Jefferson County innovation. You can thank a Steubenville inventor for bringing Pizzell irons to the world. And the Marshall County.